Okay, I'd like to call the meeting to order. Can everyone please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance to the flag? Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <clears throat> Mr. Chair, if, if uh, you will, I'd like just a moment uh, towel on the floor. Uh, first of all, I'd like to uh, welcome our uh, Secretary uh, School of Music uh, here today. She, this is her uh, first day at the board meeting, so uh, she's been working for you for the past month, getting things together, and so uh, uh, welcome. Glad to have you. Also on our agenda, we have uh, item number nine. Uh, I'd like for us to remove uh, the revised BG1 just a little bit of background on that. When we first were made aware uh, that there was going to be some uh, uh, changes through the Department of Education, uh, we didn't realize that they were internal changes uh, within the document um, that did not have anything to do with the numbers. More about the location of where the change order was taking place. You have approved this BG1 in October, so uh, we have learned uh, yesterday afternoon that there's no need for us to have this out on the agenda. So I would like to have number nine moved, and it, it does not require a, uh, a vote or an approval, a motion or approval. That being said, Mr. Chair, I'll turn it back over to you. Okay, item number one, uh, approval of the minutes for the regular meeting of 10-17-17. <coughs> Do I hear a motion to approve? I make a motion to approve. Second. Second. All in favor, say the type of saying aye. Aye. Opposed, saying I was not here. Okay. Uh, item two, confirmation and approval of claims. That's uh, Ms. Uh, Rogers to come forward at this time and uh, provide us with the confirmation of claims. Hello, folks. Hello. So to review the claims that are before you today for approval, um, ending uh, last board meeting through today, uh, the total is $430,883.23. The fund one total is $207,395.37. The amount paid at the board meeting last November from fund one was $192,310.77. That is a difference of $15,084.60 more paid this year. In reviewing the claims, there are several items that stand out. First, we've issued $11,922 to Creative Image, and that was for technology upgrades for Bardstown Middle School's library, as well as um, some items for the Gifted and Talented program. We've paid $3,500 to Lego Education for a robot maker for the Gifted and Talented program. And then also um, $17,680 to Tennis Technology, and that was for the tennis court resurfacing. That was recently finished. Fund 360, the construction fund, that total is $16,173.13. We paid $875 for paving uh, at the new bus garage for some bus parking. And then also the remainder, $15,298.13 was paid toward um, beginning the work on the softball field project. There was one payment issued out of Fund 400 for debt service, and that was for interest on one bond series for $75,447.50. Anyone have any questions or concerns on claims? I'll abstain due to a conflict. Okay, do I hear a motion to approve the claims as presented? Motion to approve. Second. Second. All those in favor say by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? All right. Okay. Item number three, financial report. <coughs> in reviewing the uh, treasurer's report for October ending, um, per the reconciliation with the bank statement, there is a verification of the cash, cash balance by fund, and it is $7,464,331.40. And then to follow up from last month's meeting, um, you all approved a capital funds request for $129,900 to finance a change order for the bus garage relocation project. 
If you recall, the capital funds request utilizes the funds remaining from capital outlay and building funds after our debt service payments have been made. Um, these funds are restricted for items such as facility and technology improvements and can't be used for operating expenditures like salaries. So last week we received notice from KDE that the capital funds request was, re was approved. So I'll make that transfer this month to the construction fund and it will be re reflected on the November ending reports. Next, I'd like to give you an update on the tax collection status. Uh, through our discount period of November 1st, we've collected 84% of the bills that were issued. This compares to 81% received last year through the same period. So we're right on target for our collections. Also, some positive news. Uh, a local retail outlet had appealed their assessment for real property for the years 2014, 15, and 16. And after reaching an agreement with the PVA recently, the value increased by nearly five and a half million dollars for all three of those years. Subsequently, our tax office issued supplemental bills for those years, which will net at least $52,406 in unanticipated revenue for this year. And then finally, as you've probably heard in the news recently, there are long-term plans to create a new bourbon destination in Bardstown named Kentucky Owl Park, and that's going to be located at the intersection of Bloomfield Road and John Rowan Boulevard. So in reviewing the plans with our district map, there are five parcels out of those eight parcels of land that fall within our boundaries. So not only for the incredible economic and employment opportunities for our local community, but this type of development boosts our school district's assessment base. Healthy growth equalizes the tax distribution among every property owner and thus it benefits all parties. Wow. Anybody have any comments or questions for Tracy? So they went before for a reassessment and they went the other way on Well, actually, I believe they received the first bill and then they appealed it to the Department of Revenue and then for the three next years they've appealed it and it's been in the court system. It actually went to the Supreme Court. And so after hearing it, they've reached an agreement. They wanted to settle, so resolved it for us. So you can look at it as it was postponed revenue. <laughs> Excellent. Okay. Thank you so much. Sure, you're welcome. Appreciate that. Item number four. Do we have to approve? Mm, no. 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 Thank you, Francis. Approval fiscal year 2017 audit report. We, uh, uh, you know, at the conclusion of each year, school systems in the state of Kentucky are required to have a, have an audit each, each fiscal year. So, uh, you know, this past summer we contracted with uh, uh, Styles and Carter Associates, um, and uh, we were able, very, very fortunate, to be able to keep our relationship with uh, uh, Mr. Strange, uh, and he's here today, has been able to uh, conduct the uh, audit for us. Uh, there's been some continuity. I think that's a positive thing. I think he does as well. Um, our exit interview went very well. Looks as though that we have a uh, very successful uh, audit overall. Uh, the thing I want to share with you, uh, in past years, uh, there have been some, I'll say, minor infractions concerning Red Book. It's just a very difficult process. We're proud to, to share with you, and Jason may, may do that as well, that we did not have repeats in those same areas. So we're uh, just to reassure you that we're giving this our undivided attention and, and fixing those areas. And after all, that's what an audit's all about, uh, to help us be better at what we do. So, Mr. Strange, I'll turn this over to you. First, I'd like to thank you, uh, Superintendent, and the board for having uh, Stiles Carter Associates and uh, sticking with, uh, with me for your audit. Uh, I'd like to just direct you that you all have a copy of the audit. I'm just going to kind of go through some of the uh, highlights and a brief overview and uh, if you have anybody has any questions on details just let me know we can dig down into those so i'll start on page one and two this is our opinion on your financial statements and specifically on page two at the top there's a paragraph titled opinion and where we in that opinion paragraph we state that in our opinion your financial statements are fairly presented in accordance with government accounting standards uh, and they are fairly presented which is a clean unmodified opinion With that, I will direct you to page 12. This is your statement of net position 
which is all of your assets of the district and all the liabilities short term and long term for the district. And you can see it's broken down into governmental activities and business type activities. Your business type activities being your food service and your child care. Uh, not so much adult care anymore as that's wound, wound down. Uh, but you can see where your total assets in the far right column, 30.9 million. Total liabilities of 32.4 million. You have a residual net position of 593,000. If you'll recall, one of your large liabilities that was put on your books, and this is the third year it's been on there, is the net pension liability for the county employees retirement system for uh, classified workers, which you'll see there, that liability is 8.6 million at uh, June 30, 2017. On page 14, this is a balance sheet more uh, similar to what you're usually si used to seeing in your monthly financials. Uh, just shows your current uh, a assets and liabilities for the most part, but you'll see in your general fund, you're showing 3.35 million <coughs> at the end of the year, liabilities of 73,000, and total fund balance residual of those of 3.28 million for your general fund. And on page 16, this is your statement showing how your fund balance changed from the prior year to the current year. For the general fund, you'll see total revenues of 23.2 million, total expenditures of 22.7 million, other financing uh, sources uh, of 869,000 for a change in fund balance of uh, increase of 1.38 million. So your fund balance for your general fund went from 1.8 million the prior year to 3.28 million at June 30, 2017. On page 18, there's more details on your food service, child care, and your adult care fund. But total assets for those proprietary type funds are 355,000. Total liabilities are 1.588 million for a, a net deficit in your net position of 873,000. And the whole reason for that deficit is that net pension li liability you'll see in the non-current, which uh, that portion is 1.57 that's allocated to the food service and child care funds. And on page 31, there's some details in the notes here uh, regarding your capital assets. Uh, most significant being the uh, construction process for the year. You'll see in the table about midway down that 962,000. Uh, and those were uh, in process at June 3rd, 2017 for the uh, uh, bus garage project. On page 35, detailing your long-term obligations, uh, and most significant being your revenue bonds payable. You see at the beginning of the year you had 22.4 million. Uh, one bond was issued for project for the, the bus garage 1.2 million, uh, and then our pay downs of 1.46 million, uh, and your ending bond balance is 2.24 million. Uh, moving along to page 51, there's some additional information that was required when the uh, pension standard was, was issued a few years back uh, to show some more detail as far as uh, the district share and how that's trended over the past three years. Uh, and you can see for TRS, as that's considered a special funding situation. So basically the state is bearing that burden and it's not being pushed down to the district. You're showing 0% of the, of, of the share of the total net pension liability for TRS, Teachers Retirement System. But for SERS, County Employees Retirement System, your proportionate share in 2015 went from 56 to 7.49 and that's 8.6 at the end of 2000 fiscal year 2017. Again as I've mentioned in the past that's not really it's not a liability that you can just write a check for and I know it's frustrating as you see it grow on your balance sheet uh, but on page 52 this is you'll see you they've told you what you needed to pay the district as far as what needs to be paid into service and you all have made those payments 100 um, percent so it's all this is created at the plan level again it's, it's 
the, the district is fulfilling their requirement to SERS currently in, as far as the required contributions for the past three fiscal years. And as uh, uh, Mr. Superintendent Hostall pointed out, there were a few items we noted in the school district or in the school when we went to the schools. Uh, as part of the contract for doing the audit with KDE, we have to do additional procedures that typically would not be done in an audit of financial statements because when you look at compliance in an audit of this, you look at what's direct and material, and there's rarely a situation that something in the school district would be direct and material to the board's financial statements. But as part of the contract, we do go into every school and we look at their activity funds <coughs> and we look at those as far as what the red book spells out they need to be doing and are they doing it. And we'll typically find minor things uh, that you're just going to see uh, multiple receipt forms that are supposed to be submitted with every of uh, all the funds that are turned into the to the treasurers. Sometimes they're supposed to be signed by the students. If you're above third grade, sometimes the teachers fill them out. So you can imagine some of these type things occur. Uh, again, nothing we've ever noted that would be direct and material to the financial statements. We just make basically minor recommendations to maybe do this this time or do this uh, in a different way or follow the red book uh, over your purchasing or uh, sometimes we'll see outdated forms. Uh, I think two years ago, every school has a credit card sign in, sign in, sign in and sign out form. And two years ago, they changed it where you had to have the PO on every time you signed out. So again, you weren't supposed to sign up the credit card without placing the PO on there. We found some instances before where the updated form wasn't used. So nothing that we, that we have seen that's major or certainly nothing direct and material to your financial statements. But overall, it was a, a clean audit and nice work with Tracy and, and everyone at the district. Um, got us everything we needed timely. Everything went smooth. Very good. Uh, the uh, board members have direct your attention before we cast a vote here on the approval uh, on item number five, the audited financial report and balance sheet the AFR, uh, those have been updated, is that correct? Correct. Sure. So, so after you make this uh, motion and if we do approve the uh, uh, audit report, we'll do uh, another similar, uh, just while Jason's here, I wanted to confirm that these have been updated uh, in simple terms based on what uh, the numbers that he uh, determines, then there are adjustments made and those have been made on, on the AFR and the balance sheet. So. We do need those in separate motions, but I just want to let you know what's going on there on item five. Any any further questions for uh, Jason? Well, I just want to say, excuse me, did you have something? No, I didn't. I just wanted to say from superintendent standpoint, it is a pleasure working with you, and we are glad that uh, Styles and Carter we were able to negotiate that deal with you, and look forward to working with you in the future. And uh, we we appreciate the way you work with us. Uh, uh, again, an audit is an audit in the sense that you're looking for things, but we learn so much uh, from you when we, we go through the process, and that's uh, we're very grateful for that, and we continue to improve every every single year. So, thank you. Thank you all. Thank, thank you. you. Sir, back to you. If we have any further discussion, I five. I hear a motion to approve the audit, uh, audited financial report and balance sheet for 2017. Hang on a second. Wait a minute. Uh, go back to number four. Uh, you'll, uh, let's, let's approve that. We're going to need to do these separate. Let's do the, the audit report is what you're uh, asking for right now. Okay. Uh, do I hear approval for the audit report fiscal year 2017? So moved. Second. 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 Okay. Peter Orton. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Approved or no. And now in this second one in the audit uh, financial report and the balance sheet, that's what I'm referring to. That work has been done, but we just simply need a separate um, motion. Now, do I hear a motion to approve the AFR and balance sheet? Make a motion. Second. Second. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Those are none. Next item, superintendent's report. Uh, in our report today, a uh, couple things. Uh, first, I want to call your attention to the activity sheet in your uh, packet there. Be sure to take a look at that. Um, the 
Second part of our superintendent's report today is uh, has to do with the Crusade for Children, the WHAS Crusade for Children. I can't remember uh, when we have not received a grant from them. They have been so generous to us and have worked so hard to uh, help our uh, students, especially those who are physically challenged, uh, providing many, many things for us. Um, we do uh, conduct a fundraiser uh, each spring of the year, a district-wide uh, fundraiser that uh, does support this cause. Uh, they are so generous to us that we try to give back as much as we can uh, to them. Um, this year, uh, Mr. Lance Boston, our uh, Director of Special Ed, uh, he is the driving force behind these projects, and, and uh, we've had some really super good projects. Uh, this, this past year, we were uh, able to put in a, an indoor playground into our Early Childhood Education Center. Now, to our knowledge, uh, uh, this is the caliber of playground. I mean, th there's nothing else like it in, in the state of Kentucky at this point. However, based on what Lance tells me, he's, he's received a lot of calls since we've had this installed. There's, there, there's a lot of people that are really interested in, in uh, what we've been able to pull off here. But, but we say thank you to our WHAS partner. Uh, really appreciate their, the, the uh, Crusade grant. And uh, also um, uh, to Mr. Boston for his uh, thinking outside the box of sorts uh, to come up with some, some really good ideas. So, Mr. Boston, I'll turn this over to you. And we're right. looking forward to it. Thank you. Um, well, I, when Mr. Holstall asked me to come speak, I was very excited uh, for two reasons. One, well, the main reason I can talk about two of my favorite things, that is our special education program, and two, the Crusade for Children. Um, and as you guys probably recall, every year I come to you and I ask the board's permission to apply for the WHS Crusade for Children grant. <clears throat> and you all have always been very supportive of this. So I want to highlight a couple things in this presentation. The first thing, I just want to give you an idea of what this um, grant process looks like. So school districts and other organizations that are nonprofits are um, invited to apply for the grant. Not every agency, not every school um, gets to apply. So the first thing, you gotta be invited. The second thing is uh, I ask you for board approval to apply. Typically uh, via surveys, number three, I will gain staff and stakeholder insight into potential projects. So I ask our special ed teachers, I may survey parents, I may ask principals, what do you guys need? What are some ideas you have? And what's, what's something we can do for these kids that's outside of the box? Um, number four is uh, just continue that discussion with special ed department and administrators. And number five, we dream big. I always um, ask the staff and the principals to think of something that you don't think normally would work in a school because we might be able to make it work. And two, the crusade really loves funding projects that are unique. Um, you know, they get a hundred... Um, probably 200 applications a year for materials. While they're happy to provide those, they really like to see things that are not ordinarily found in programs. So number six, we complete and submit the grant between the end of December and January. So next month, I'll be asking your permission to apply for this grant. Number seven, I defend the grant to the WHS Crusade for Children Advisory Council. So they'll set up an appointment, um, they'll tell me a time and a place to be in Louisville. I go and it's a board similar to um, the makeup of ours and I, tell them, what, one, why we need the project, two, how we think it'll be sustainable, and three, most importantly, how it benefits our kids. And lastly, districts are notified of their award amount around May. So, Mr. Holtzclaw mentioned our, our long history of receiving support from the Crusade, and actually since 1969, the Crusade has given over $900,000 to schools within Nelson County. Several years ago, Nelson County and Bargetown applied for a grant as one, but as we started to get our own programs, um, serve our own moderate severe students, we started applying separately. Here's, here's a few of our recent projects. In 2012, we did a snooze little room at the primary school, a sensory room. In 2013, excuse me, we did some technology and communication devices for students. And when I say communication devices, these are iPads, um, Dynavox, Dynavoxes, things to help give kids a voice. Um, in 2014, we had our BPS ECE, which stands for Exceptional Child Education, another term for special education, playground put in. In 2015, these same kiddos that were used to having the snooze on them here at the primary school started transitioning to the elementary school. So we talked to the crusade about why we need that now at the elementary and middle school. Had that done in 2015, and in 2016, we had a FMD kitchen 
put in in the new F and Deerham in Marshtown Middle School to help with daily living, skills, cooking, etc. And also added some more adapted playground equipment to our preschool. And then this year has been our most recent project, our preschool indoor playground. So here's a picture of the snooze on the room. This student um, is enjoying the sensory input that she gets from the snooze on the room. In 2014, we had our, our BPS ECE playground installed. Um, so here's a picture down the bottom left from Water Day. Every year they have a big Water Day party out there as part of their field day. Um, and then this shows you the back of the playground is the main structure. And then up here we've got some special needs swings as well as some other equipment that our kids in wheelchairs can be taken out of and set in and still get a lot of good sensory input and, and cooperative play with their peers. This playground is open and inclusive, meaning regular classrooms come out and play as well as our students with more severe disabilities. So it gives all kids um, something to do and an avenue to play and, and learn together. Our snooze on room in, in 2015 was put in in the catwalk of Barstown Elementary and Barstown Middle School. It's shared by at least, I would say, 60 of our students, and the location couldn't work out better because of the middle school and elementary being connected by that catwalk. There was a reading lab that got moved to the basement um, or the bottom of the elementary school to where sh she <laughs> could regularly see her students and work with her high school peer tutors. So it opened that up for us and was a prime location. This is the kitchen that was put in in Miss Tina Hilton's classroom in 2016, as well as the um, playground equipment that was added to our preschool playground. Tina jokes, was joking around, was telling everybody she got a nicer kitchen in her classroom since she did in her house. <laughs> um, and one thing that really helped out with this project is that one of her students, her father, um, helped us with, with this project. So. And this is our most recent project, our soft play indoor playground. So when you go into the multi-purpose room at the preschool, we now have a soft play indoor playground, similar to what you would see in a Chick-fil-A, McDonald's, et cetera. The biggest difference is we have added so much more on this bottom floor for our students who are still crawlers or not, not as mobile that can't get up here. Um, and we kind of identified this project like, well, why, why do we need this at our preschool? Well, one, we didn't want weather to prevent kids from going outside and play, especially at this age. While, they have the multi, while we have the multi-purpose room, the state does limit you in how many students can be in one space at a time, given certain square footage. So we wanted uh, this because indoor playgrounds are a great alternative to outdoor play. This also offers both upper layer and lower level, lower layer, um, I'm sorry, lower level ADA access to our students. All of this is ADA approved. The play system is unique to the needs and abilities and interests of our kids, and it allows for more students to be able to play the multi-purpose room at one time, because what we've essentially did, what done was add more square footage by adding the time, upper level of play. And it's innovative. Like Mr. Holskall shared with you, this is the only one of these I know about in the state that's in, a, that's in a preschool. Since this has been installed, I've had three other school districts contact me wanting to come and see it. Um, at the early childhood, and in our special education program in general, we're very big on play. One of my favorite qu quotes by Fred Rogers, who we may know better as Mr. Rogers, is play is often talked about as if it were a relief, from, a relief from serious learning, but for children, play is serious learning. Play is the work of childhood. And I, I think we do such a great job of that as a school district in realizing that, while yes, these kids may be little at the preschool, and we need to be building these foundational skills, part of their day is learning through play. Um, this is some, some, some of the equipment we've had put in in this, in this structure of these, these um, these are called ro rollers, if you will. So they can squeeze through vertically, but then on the, on the top level, they can squeeze through horizontally. This is a suspended ring that helps our kiddos that have some mobility issues, practice crawling and overcoming ob obstacles. And then this, this over here is like a jungle gym, if you will, inside. That, that's probably been our most used and our most popular um, item in the play in the playground. So this is my favorite part of this, this whole project has been seeing the kids' reaction to it. We had one little boy that walked in the very first day he saw it. He didn't say a word. He literally just went over to it and hugged it. Like for five minutes, he did not let go. I mean, Ms. Sharp and I were like, all right, buddy, it's time to go. I promise you're going to come back here later today. So on this day, I put 70 degrees and sunny because this is very important because that's what the temperature was outside this day. It was 70 degrees and sunny. It was the nicest day we had all of October. And here, 
what we have is a bunch of kids trying to convince Miss Sharp on why they shouldn't go outside and play today <laughs> and why they need to stay inside. <laughs> so I'm going to play this for you guys real quick. She, she took the video and immediately um, sent it to me and I, I saved it because I was like, that's a classic. Okay, all right. Mr. Boston, these boys and girls are refusing to go outside to play today. There's lots of reasons that we need to stay inside. Michael, why do you think it's important to stay inside? Because it's important to go outside and make people just burn. outside. Brayden, why do we need to stay inside? What's wrong with outside? Because I... I think it's in the way. You think it's in the way? Not a crap in the sky. Sophia, why do we need to stay inside today? Because it's cold. It's cold out. I had no idea it was cold. Why do we really want to stay inside today, friends? Because we want to play the big thing. We want to play the big thing. All right. We want to play the big thing. Let's just be real. Let's get to the chase. We want to play in this thing. Uh, and that was about the third day of, of having it. So the enthusiasm has not declined either. And they, they absolutely love it. We can't even get my little girl to like bring a jacket to school to, the, to preschool. Now if I bring my jacket, I might have to go outside and play. I said, Lena, they're not going to leave you inside and let you play without your class. They're going to give you a sweatshirt to wear. you got to wear your jacket. But uh, does anybody have any questions about the process or this project or any, any past projects that we've done? Um, I really I can't thank you guys enough for your, uh oh, hang on, for your support, because um, there's, there's a lot of school districts that don't get to offer these things to, to these kids, and you guys are so supportive of what we do here. Um, you know, our, our special education program is known statewide for the innovative things we do for kids, but that wouldn't happen without the board and honestly, a very, very supportive superintendent. Um, so I thank you guys on behalf of the kids, and just want you to know that we're looking forward to uh, other free money we can get in the future from the crusade so and being good partners I think possibly so, next month you'll have a request yes and i and I'll, and I'll plan on having that together and showing you guys what we're looking at <clears throat> next year so you'll know what you're what you're approving so where did you get the idea for this you know it's really it's really strange so well, i mean not strange my kids go to chick-fil-a all the time and i just got to thinking about like what are some things <clears throat> sorry I might get a little emotional um you know, what are some things that my kids get to do that other kids don't get to do because they don't have a disability? And this kind of popped in my mind. And Ms. Sharp and I kind of talked about it, and I said, uh, you're going to have to give up some of your space. And she's like, uh, I said, but wait, hear me out. So when she heard it and we talked about it, and then when she realized it increased her square footage in her gym, she was all over it. So that's kind of where I got the idea. Um, there's, there's so much that we do and we take for granted from kids to adults that other people can't do. And just playing on something like this is one of those. I mean, that's like that little guy that hugged it. Just knowing his story and his background, he's never seen one of those. Or he, he may have driven by one and drink, but don't want to drink to play one-on-one. -on -one. He probably hasn't. So, that's it. All right, thank you. All right, um, if, uh, I've got one other item for Superintendent's report. You, you have in front of you there, would someone get those lights, please, when you get a chance? Um, uh, you have in front of you there a binder uh, that has uh, some information in it uh, for uh, the evaluation process, which will take will take place next uh, board meeting. So I just wanted to call that to your attention. I've met with uh, the chair and vice chair, and we've discussed the process. So if you have any questions, feel free to give them uh, a call. There is one document in there, and that document, the golden rod sheet, needs to be returned by December the 7th, please. You need to give that to Chairman Roby or uh, drop it off in an envelope uh, at the front desk. I think you'll find your binders be very organized and uh, helpful. You've done this process a few times, so I think you're, you'll fully understand it. And that concludes the superintendent's report today. Next item is recognition, recognition of visitors. If anyone would like to address the board, please go to the podium, give your name and address and what you would like to talk about. Item number eight, focus on delivery target dates, Barstown Middle School. Today, uh, we're going to be hearing uh, in a first of a series of our five principals will be sharing uh, with us their continuous plan to uh, improve uh, closing the student achievement gap in their school. 
And so we're going to start with Dr. Clark today, and uh, he's going to share with uh, us some, some plans that uh, maybe some things that he has accomplished and then uh, some things he has his eye on that uh, we're going to accomplish in the near future. So, Dr. Clark, glad to have you. It's all yours. Pleasure to be here if this uh, technology will cooperate with me. I got you. Anyway, um, it is always a pleasure to come and, and have an opportunity to just present it to you guys and gals from the board. Um, I love being principal of Barstown Middle. It, it is a pretty darn special place. Um, there are just regularly amazing things happening, and, and I'm going to do a quick overview of our, our focus this year, and, and I'll talk to you briefly before I do about the process that we began last year that carried over this year, and I'm, I'm, I'm sold that it is really making a difference. And that is teacher leaders taking a real, taking a significant role of what we do at school. Innovation at the middle school is on fire. We have things happening, and that's, that's what this district is all about. We, I have staff that are coming up with new and exciting ideas really daily, um, getting in my ear about things they want to try and do and taking risks. That could not excite me more, and there is no way that I could even begin to come up with those ideas that those folks are doing. It's, it is them. So now, my, my role as principal is to support, to foster that kind of environment, um, and, and at the center of all that is my leadership team that I began a couple of years ago, Team Diligent, you heard about that a while back. I mean, the, the, our, we worked very hard this summer to think about this coming year, and much of what you're going to see is that work. So um, it, it just is a, is a lot of great things happening, and I'm excited to share it with you. So first I want to share five goals, and this is an overview of the five goals that we've set for the school. Uh, something, that, some work we began last year, and it has continued this year, and I think some other schools, I know the high school and elementary and primary, have all engaged in this concept of growth mindset. Uh, it's, it's all about kids understanding, kids and adults, understanding that effort is required to reach your goals and that you fail sometimes. You don't always, you aren't always successful. So we have worked really hard to implement, learn about that research and implement those strategies to foster that kind of environment. It's healthy for adults and kids to think that way. PLCs continue to be a real focus for us and, and, and we adapted our goal a little bit because it, we really are about improving the way we do PLCs. So my charge to them uh, normally would be, I wanna know what your PLC is gonna do to focus on student learning and I wanna know, you know what is your strategies to improve in that particular area. I've added, I've added to that and said, I also wanna know how you improving as a PLC. How are you working better together? How are you making a stronger impact? How are you really monitoring progress? Um, and there's still work to be done there. Um, but we have, we've had some PD this summer and it really pushed us to think about what do we need to do as professionals to get better at collaboration and making an impact on student learning. Communication continues to be super important to us. Um, we have a simple overarching goal and that's to be effective and efficient uh, at communicating with folks, uh, but we've realized that is so important and you can't do it too much, and sometimes when you make a mistake, it's because you didn't communicate well. I mean, that happens all the time. Um, so we think that is an important uh, aspect, and probably the newest uh, initiative that we're working on is, is the way we do grading, and communication of grades is such an important part of what we do in school. So we're looking at policy and we're really trying to think about how can we better communicate learning. Student leadership, that's probably one of the most exciting areas that we have uh, seen just huge impacts in the overall environment of our school. Um, we want to be sure that we're providing opportunities for kids to lead as often as we can. Today at school, well here's an innovative idea, I had, I had social studies teachers come to me and say about a month ago, can we have dressed like a historical figure day at the middle school? And um, I, I learned a little bit about what they were thinking about, and they said, you know, I think the day before Thanksgiving or the day before Thanksgiving break would be great. They pitched a good idea, so they, uh, they we did that today. So as a result, one of the teacher, one of the social studies teachers, had kids approach them and say, we want to talk about 
who we are and, and put together a little skit. Well, they, we did a, a skit this morning in front of the whole school. It was very short, but kids did it all. Uh, and that's just becoming the norm. Kids stepping outside of their comfort zone. Um, and again, it's just a very healthy thing for, for all kids, especially kids that are uh, in middle school. The last goal that we have is all about student focus. So we um, were very successful um, getting very focused on reading. And we developed, we worked hard at relationships with kids that were struggling in reading. We worked hard to monitor their progress. And as a result, middle school has continued to grow steadily by leaps and bounds in the area of reading with K prep scores, you know, far exceeding the state uh, average. The area that we still need to work on is math, and, it, and it's kind of leveled. We've kind of been up and down, but it's kind of leveled off. Um, but this whole idea of, of student focus, if we were piloting that concept of getting, getting laser focused on kids, we've done it and it was successful, and so we're doing the same thing in math. Uh, we're gonna really zero in on kiddos that are struggling in math. We're gonna work hard at developing those relationships with them, helping them believe they can do it, and then uh, making sure that we're providing real impactful instruction to make a difference with them. Now I'm just gonna kind of run through a few photos of initiatives that we're doing, some of which you have seen. But just to stress, well, for that, this is photos, but really important. This was our work this summer. Again, we're zeroing in on what are we about. The district, the district engaged in this process and we adopted the very same vision as the district. I think it's very appropriate and it's a powerful vision. But we, we thought about our work at the middle school, what is our mission? Um, and we also identified, which I think are powerful, we, we identified values of putting students first, developing relationships, realizing we need to grow all the time, recognizing and embracing failure, that that's a catalyst for growth when we fail. We want kids to know that. Effort, really critical to success. We want to prepare kids and for skills and for life. We value respect, diversity, we celebrate that, and we think leadership is what it's all about. That was work we did this summer. So things that we, we start our day every day with morning assembly, again, it promotes leadership. It is awesome at communication uh, and is very focused on kids. That's what we did that skip this morning. Um, we, for the second year, we had that, we, we modified our pledge, uh, acknowledging what we're all about at school, and now we have our Tigers Lead Pledge. And each word, teamwork, innovation, growth, effort, respect, service, lead, um, excel, achieve, and discover, all those things are things we promote every morning. We're all about the whole child, focused on kids. Uh, we have just ramped up our homeroom and advisory program, making sure that we're providing social and emotional uh, instruction for kids. We think that's really important. Uh, we do a lot of other things in that homeroom and advisory, but the uh, social emotional curriculum is a research-based curriculum, second steps. Um, and, and we have been very pleased with, with how that's going. You might recognize that guy, if you know Graham. Uh, you heard about Tiger Alerts. Again, it promotes a positive environment, communicates directly with parents. It's been powerful, and that's not me. That's teachers and the environment that we're trying to create. And the last thing that I'll share, and this is another, this is brand new this year, we used to have a renaissance program focused on kids doing well in the classroom, and, and uh, it was mostly about grades. We now, you earn your stripes. You'll see the Tigers theme over and over again. Um, so we're, we are honoring kids for work ethic or rewarding kids for work ethic, attendance, behavior, and their GPA. So children have opportunities to earn stripes in, in all four of those, and there's incentives attached to those. Um, it's, it's in its infancy, and it's been, it's been really good. We had over 100 kids earn four stripes uh, we hope to do more than that in the future, but those, they're not necessarily super easy. Work ethic, no missing assignments by, the, by a certain point. Uh, attendance, no unexcused absences. 
uh, behavior, no office referrals. You can get a scan on your badge and you can survive, but no to the office referrals, and then your GPA 3.0 or higher. Any questions? From the board, I have a question. Yes. In your opinion, uh, in your with your experience, by what grade is it most critical that uh, the basics of mathematics are achieved, so such that their problems aren't created down the road? Is there is there a specific? I don't think there's some. Or the earlier the better. If you're talking about, I mean, about, if you don't have it by the time you're the third grade. Uh, or is that going to be problematic or yeah it just it just gets to be a larger and larger gap and, and so a lot of time if a, if a student is struggling in math for for various reasons mm -hmm. uh, struggling in math by the time they get to sixth grade we're making up deficits from you know they just struggle for a long time those deficits are still there we in closing we we made a lot of progress closing but you still you still may not get to that grade level because you've got to overcome several years of instruction uh, or instruct over several years, several years of kids can learn those concepts. Um, so the earlier the better in terms of the basics would be, I think what my math teacher would say too. That's, that sounds like a pretty simple answer uh, and maybe obvious. Well, I'm just thinking, you know, avoid having to bridge the gap before we have the gap. Yeah, I'm saying. yeah. We have those conversations at the district level regularly and I, I expect those things will happen even more in the future. Um, do you have a math coach? Coach, no. Yes. Coach, no. Okay. Because um, some districts and other places. Right. So I, I have, a, have an extraordinary math team. Uh, so I have some very talented teachers. I have very talented teachers across the, the building, but some of my brightest and best are in math. I mean, I, I don't want my other content areas to hear that necessarily. <laughs> they, 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 they are, they're an exceptional group in, the, in their content area. So no, we don't have coaches, but, but I can rest assured that there's good instruction going on. Are the individual uh, needs identified in the PLC? math PLC. Yeah, so we, we drill it down to, uh, yes, we're looking at skills, like concepts and skills in math, uh, and, and teachers are very informed. That the math test that's, uh, that we take three times a year really helps, helps, helps us with that. Not only that, but also teachers just in regular instruction and testing uh, can identify areas. But also, the kids, the individual students, we're definitely more targeted and focus on individual students that um, you know this this child we we can move them and here's how we're going to do it those kinds of conversations okay is there any kind of coordination between the elementary school and middle school and the middle school and high school uh, by the time they uh, the elementary students get to you in math they should know what you're going to be teaching so that w they should be building a foundation in the elementary school primary and elementary school right and then it carries on you prepare the kids for what's going what they're going to get in the high school as far as yeah so um I, I think there has definitely been some conversations i think that's something we can do better at is having those vertical conversations uh, but we have met vertically that's the the phrase you know uh, third grade through eighth grade and then even into the high school and have those conversations about basically the question that you ask is what is essential that this child needs to know and be able to do by the time they get to me so a third a fourth grade teacher might ask a third grade, grade teacher that question or tell them what it is so the third grade teacher makes sure they do their their darnness that those kids are ready for that level um, i think we can do a better job there yeah but i think uh, there's definitely a lot of collaboration that has gone on and will continue to since you're susceptible to good ideas, I presented it to uh, Mr. Pickett, and he hasn't taken it to his heart, I don't think. Uh, if your teachers could present their lessons in ramp, I think the students would pick it up a lot quicker. You, it's happening. I mean, we, you, you, there are times when I have teachers that are dancing on their heads uh, in classrooms. Um, if you look at Facebook, you've seen me rap. A little bit too. So uh, I got a lot of props for that. Love you. Do you have anything else for Dr. Clark? Thank you.
Thank you. Thank you, Thank you very much. much. Uh, item 10, approval for capital funds request. If you'll go to, uh, I think it's 245 in your packet there, you'll find that um, document. It's colorful. Uh, you can kind of scan down to where you see the uh, orange, uh, close to an orange anyway. Uh, and right above that, I think that'll be line 17. Right above that, you'll see line 16. Once you've found that, then I want you to have a copy, this, a, pa a paper copy of this document. You can pass that down. <coughs> So the paper copy is October's approval of the capital funds. So you might recall, I apologize for the number of notes, those don't really have anything to do with this, it was just on my copy from last month. Uh, so uh, what you'll see is uh, a lot of uh, detail on how we arrived at line uh, 16 uh, last month. Because of that, um, the work that we did last month, you'll see uh, in your document uh, a number that says October line 17, $425,889. Uh, then you'll see in, over on your uh, November document, you'll see 420409 and uh, 5580 as a balance left in that orange line I was telling you about. Why am I bringing this up? Because I want you to understand where we're starting today. This is where we're starting. This is what was left over. I begin uh, talking about this by reminding you that these are capital funds. And what are capital funds? Capital funds are capital outlay that you get per student based on your ADA. And then you also have some leftover bonding funds. What's unique about this is that there's only one way this money can be spent. And it's tighter now than it was last year and even tighter than it was two years ago. We can only use this money for these kind of projects. So I just want you to, to, to uh, you're spending this money the only way you can. In other words, you're spending this money guilt-free. You're not taking away from a teacher's salary or a utility payment or some other type of expense that might affect instruction or curriculum. This is the only way the money can, this particular money can be spent. So, what we're doing is we're asking you to approve today uh, out of that 425,000 uh, uh, that we originally started with, we're going to earmark, now if you're looking with me on down 05, excuse me, 0450 under description, under the Schedule A part of the uh, current requested amount in detail, you'll see $265,500. That's what we've set aside for this softball facility. We think that we can do this much less than that. But this is an architect number and uh, we're required to go with that. You can see directly under that, there's a number of uh, 26,500. That is an architect fee. Of course, if that number goes down, the 262 goes down, then the fee goes down. Uh, that's a percentage that we're required to pay there. And then there are uh, two other uh, areas there. You'll see a newspaper advertisement, advertisement and other printing uh, these are non-negotiables as well, and that's a $2,000 expenditure there. And then the last two items are the KISTA principal and the KISTA interest, and those are for the buses that we purchase yearly. Of course, we're, we'll be reimbursed that money at a later time. Uh, so that's uh, we're using this money to make those payments, but we'll be reimbursed uh, with that money later. So you know how that works. So what you're being asked to do today uh, is to approve this four hundred and twenty thousand four hundred twenty thousand four hundred and nine dollar uh, uh, movement of money out of capital outlay into these projects that will leave us now with a balance of five thousand four hundred and eighty dollars so well, next year when we get more capital outlay that money will be available uh, we have bond payments that uh, money is left over let me give you an example how that happens we were counting on paying on a bond Say a, say a bond series uh, A and it was costing us 6% uh, interest rates dropped and we're able to refinance for 5%. Uh, that's a 1% that goes into unused bonding funds, for example. And so that's probably not likely to happen based on the, the uh, from what I understand, the feds are looking at moving that number up a little bit, but, but that's what's happened in the past and that's why we've had that money there. Okay? What kind of questions would you have for me? 
type of replenishment rate or is there an average replenishment rate? Uh, you mentioned the ADA, uh, like on a monthly basis, that this fund gets replenished. Uh, Percentage-wise, it would be close to, if I understand your question correctly, <coughs> next year it will be 100% on the capital outlay side of it. So year in, year out, we're, we're looking at this um, yes. available amount of funds, mm -hmm. typically. These funds are for, uh, like I said, items that we've listed here, but also like say you have a, a, a partial piece of roofing that goes out and it's right. usually in the neighborhood. Tracy, am I right about 270, 270,000? Yes, sir. Uh, would be a good estimate. And so, or maybe an HVAC goes out and you have to replace a heat right. pump. Uh, mm -hmm. So these are these are the kind of things you can use this for. Otherwise you use general fund. So, which of course that's something we want to stay away from as much as we can and that's what I want to tell you that we're doing here we're staying away from general fund do I approval of a cap request for capital fund in the amount of four hundred and twenty thousand four hundred nine dollars make motion for second second all those in favor signify by the thing I opposed or none okay item 11 I have a uh, Lance Boston come and address this matter for us. All right, thank you. So um, the next item I'm asking for approval for a contract um, speech therapist. We have Miss Sarah Riggs going on maternity leave at Barstown Primary School, and she will be out from approximately today uh, to, uh, I believe, sometime in April. So we're having Julie Sloan, who has actually filled in for another maternity leave for us in the past, um, willing to come back. Julie comes to us with, I believe it was 11 years in public school experience, and now works at a a private um, clinic in Elizabeth Town. So, with your approval, I'll have Julie in and, and uh, get her started for kids next week. Discussion. All those in favor of approval for the contract for speech series? I make a motion to approve. Thank you. I'll second. All those in favor, say by saying aye. 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 Opposed <coughs> are none. Thank you. Item 12: Approval travel authorization. We have four of those travel authorizations for you to uh, look at today. Uh, I have looked at these closely. Uh, we'll just give you the opportunity to uh, look through them if you have any uh, questions. But I, I can tell you that uh, the, uh, they all qualify. They're either overnight or out of state uh, or overnight and out of state. Uh, chaperones are there, both male and female. Uh, funding is taken care of by uh, friends of uh, and um, uh, sponsors will be in attendance as well. So all four of these are in good order. If you have particular questions, I'll be glad to answer them, and I would recommend that you approve all four together. To be them. And all four of them are using our buses? Yes. Yes, all four are traveling on uh, school buses. No, no commercial travelers. Okay, do I hear approval for the four travel authorizations as presented? So moved. Second? Second. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed are none. Next item, number 14, personnel. Okay, we do have um, uh, several of these to share with you as well. Uh, we have uh, um, medical leave for uh, Amanda Boone, maternity, uh, Heather um, uh, Lindbergh. Mr. Uh, Chairman, did we skip number 13? Did we? No. Approval of leave of that. What did I say? I thought we just did. Okay, he said 14, so that's what I was going to say. Dyslexia setting. <laughs> Sorry, just to make sure we didn't miss any items. Item 13, approval of leave of absence. Okay, leave of absence. Um, as I was saying, um, Margaret uh, Smith, maternity, and Kelsey Taylor, also um, maternity. So these are all uh, uh, folks that will be using their uh, allocated sick days and also the Family Medical Leave Act. So everything's in good order there. I would recommend that you approve these five. Do I hear approval for the five leave of absences? A motion. Second. Approval. Second. No second. All those in favor say by saying aye. 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 Item 14, personnel resignation and retirement. Just make you aware of two of those that we have. Sarah Floyd is a assistant coach for our academic team at the elementary school. And we have a bus driver that's going out at mid-year, December the 31st, uh, Ms. Susan Peake. No approval necessary. Site-based decision-making council meetings are attached. Are there a motion for adjournment? Mm -hmm. Motion to adjourn. Second. Second. Favor, say, Bob, saying aye. 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 We are out. Just.